morning, good morning, and happy Monday. I hope everybody's doing great and had a great week last week. I know there's a lot of chaos that was going on, a lot of confusion that was happening, but you know, I hope through all that you're able to make some pretty good sales and uh, you know deal with customers appropriate. I know with everything in the election going on, it's kind of hard to talk to uh, the customers about what is going to happen in the future, but you know what? That's kind of why we are in the industry that we're in. We love chaos, we love change, we love turmoil. That's kind of kind of what we do, why we do what we do. Uh, so this week, what we are gonna talk about is effectively working leads. I had a lot of questions about this last few weeks. So I thought, hey, let's spend about 10 minutes, let's go through that. So start with a pretty good Michael Porter quote. Strategy is about making choices, trade-offs. It's about deliberately choosing to be different. And that is kind of the thing about working leads effectively. All these people are going to be contacted by, you know, how many different agents right now? What is going to make you be different and what is going to make you stand out? So happy Motivation Monday, everybody. So for those of you that are kind of new to these calls, uh, what is going to happen is we're going to go through a quick tip of the week. We're going to take a look at the trends, what is selling right now, we'll take a look at who the sales leaders are. And last week's sales week was just mind-blowing. And then in the end, we're going to end with a sales technique, which is, again, is going to be how to effectively work and communicate with your leads. So last week's tip of the week is what we're going to review first, which I got a lot of uh, questions about. It was about the new carrier. So... Well, not the carrier, but the new plan, America's Healthcare Plan, which is actually a MEC or minimum essential, essential coverage plan for self-employed individuals. So it's the self-employed and their family, first off. So what it is, it's really built to uh, make a penalty-proof protection for those who are self-employed. Again, the biggest thing is it's for self-employed people. Uh, from this, they do get that uh, 1095, so they will get the form that says, hey, I had coverage throughout the whole year. That was MEC appropriate, and it is 6750 a member. Take a look at hcpsales.com. If you have not even set up your account yet, make sure to set up your account. Take a look at this carrier. Uh, it is doing absolutely great right now. It is flying off the shelves. We are extremely busy with it. And the nice thing is if you can do this with your short term, you're really making sure your client has that protection. As long as they don't need any of those essential health benefits, you know, mental health, maternity, things like that, even though this does provide it, but you know, we know with a major medical policy, it's gonna be a way better stop loss coverage, but this provides them benefits for it. But if you can do that with the short term, you're doing a ton of uh, good work with that. So what I wanted to bring up this week is the NatGen lead portal for inbound calls. So you guys have been talking about inbound calls. You know, we want more inbound calls. We want them. Well, you, obviously, we've been listening. So it has been made. NatGen, which is the uh, you know parent company of HCP here, they did create a live inbound call portal for you. Uh, the biggest things about it is it's going to need to use high-speed internet, and you need a USB headset. The nice thing is that you can set for the calls to be delivered only when you are at your phone. So you're not gonna sit there getting calls when you are not there. If you have any questions or if you're interested in receiving live inbound calls, call agency services. They will walk you through it a little bit. You can talk about lead costs with them. You can talk to them about functionality as well. So take a look at it. Uh, it was emailed out again, I think last Tuesday. So even though a lot of things happened on last Tuesday, try to find this, it is about the live uh, the lead portal for live inbound calls. So the people are going to be directly to you from people who are calling in to specific numbers. You can answer and you can be their personal broker. Pretty cool. I would take a look at it. I have been using it a bit. It is a lot of fun and it's fairly easy to use. So the trends. So taking a look at some of the trends. The first one is for major medical. Obviously, we had an increase in that and Coventry was leading last week. That was kind of interesting. We had a 35% increase in short-term medical sales. Huge, 35% increase. Uh, so National General was leading the way as usual. Again, National General is about 80 to 85% of the short-term sales in general. Uh, so if that is one of the carriers that you are not contracted with, take a look at it. It is pretty easy to become contracted with. For the accident, our accident sales were up 63%. What is that telling me? That we are putting it on almost every major medical policy we sell because we're pretty good with matching our accidents to our short terms, you know, matching that total open, uh, the exposure there. But with this one up 63%, blew my mind. I just had to show you guys that number. Uh, the leader with that would be Golden Rule, as well as critical illness. We are up 40% in critical illness, and that is 
with CBL leading as usual. Again, if you are not contracted with CBL or if you have CBL questions, let us know. Colorado Banker's Life is a great critical illness policy. It pays really good commissions and it's really nice for your customers. As well here with dental, we had an increase of 140%. This is what I love about open enrollment. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna have an increase and increase and increase. Keep in mind though, really quick, next week, right around the holidays, it does slow down just a tick. So right around Thanksgiving, it's gonna slow down just a little bit, not too much. And then again, during December, usually around those uh, the big winter holidays there, so it'd be Hanukkah and Christmas, it is gonna slow down a little bit as well. So these are really good numbers. They are gonna keep pretty strong. These numbers that happened last week would probably be the numbers around the holiday season because we're gonna have a pretty big growth in business, a little slowdown, pretty big growth, a little dip, and then we end open enrollment strong. So if you haven't taken a look at those inbound calls, if you haven't become contracted with you know the uh, that nice MEC plan, the penalty proof plan, do that. These are gonna be things that are gonna help you make sure that you're maximizing your open enrollment as much as possible. That way, come February, come March, come April, when you're going on those vacations after you're starting to get those really great commission checks, you don't have to stress as much. So taking a look at the big sales shout outs for last week, for Major Medical, we have Michael Howard and Tyler Moem. Really good job with Major Medical, completely led the way. Short term medical, Jacob Gordon, usually the leader with that, I'm not too shocked. Uh, leading with Golden Rule, with Silver, we have David Michael Taxer with NHIC, and Bronze would be Andrew Orlikoff, Orlikoff, excuse me, with NHIC. In the ancillaries, we have David Michael Taxer leading with that, so did a really good job in short term, just killed it in the ancillaries. Uh, Starmount was actually one of the biggest selling factors, and then Triomed as well. Uh, Susan Mat Matili with Golden Rule, and then Elaine, Elaine Second with CBL and Team Corp Dental. So, those are really good ones. You'll see that dental is a pretty big one right now. Sell them with their major medical policies. It's the easiest ancillary to put on. I would also try to make sure to sell those accidents because those are the ancillary products that your customers are actually going to use. So if you can add ancillary, if you can add both the accident and the dental, you're doing the best service possible for your customer there. So again, because it's open enrollment, this week's and next week's Major Medical or um, Motivational Monday is going to be a little short. We're going to try to keep it quick and to the point for you uh, so we can get you back, get you selling again. So this week's is going to specifically be about a lead strategy. So again, I've had a lot of people ask for those lead strategies. How do you maximize each lead um, You know, so I can get through the calls quicker, so I can get a hold of people uh, faster, so I don't have to spend as much time prospecting. I can spend more time selling. So I kind of thought this was a pretty good representation. I found this picture. I've been saving it for a while. Uh, for the hunger in all of our eyes right now, you know, we have we have this. We are the lines. We really want to make sure that we are, you know, the, the leader of the pack. That we are the ones who are going to be leading everything that's going on. And we have all these great ideas, but how do we make them happen? How can we put them all together? So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you a pretty quick lead strategy that is going to help you get through quicker. Uh, the biggest thing about lead strategies is that you have to have a good organization system. I know Tammy walked through one that was called Agent Cubed. It is pretty powerful. If you have your own, that's fine. It's more about how can you stay organized as well because a lot of this is going to say how many times have you contacted this person. Uh, so to get into a little bit of statistics to start off the bat, let's see if we'll move over there. So it says 2% of sales are made on the first contact. I'd say it's about accurate. 3% of sales are made on the second, 5% of sales are made on the third, and only 10% of sales are made on the fourth. But 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 20th contact, especially right now. A lot of times people have to go talk to their friends. They're going to have to talk to their spouses. You know, They want to talk to their parents if you're dealing with a little younger generation. Uh, they're going to go through and try to read news articles with, hey, this is what happened in the election. What the heck should I do? Making sure that we're staying in contact with these leads is really, really important. But to even get in contact, we have to just get in the first contact with them, which is kind of what we're going to talk about today. So 48% of salespeople never follow up with the prospect, period. Uh, that is pretty scary to think about. Only 48% or 52% actually follow up with the prospect. I'll tell you, when I first started doing sales about 15 years ago, I had a lot of prospects who, you know what, they kind of made me uncomfortable when I first talked to them, so I quit doing it. Bad idea, bad idea. Even if they make you uncomfortable, always follow up. 
25% of salespeople only contact a prospect twice before they stop reaching out. 12% of salespeople only make three contacts before they stop, and 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. Again, what did it say before? That 80% of sales are going to be made, you know, between contact five and I'd say 20 to go to the kind of the extreme. So progression of a sale. If we're taking a look, contact one again, 43%. The other one's a little different sales uh, source there, 48, but you can see the numbers are really close. Have given up. On contact two, 68% of the sales people have given up. On contact three, 80% of sales people have given up. It takes on contact four for the sale to actually start happening. Contact five are really getting to know their needs. So you can see we need to stay in contact. We need to keep consistent. That is how you're going to do it. The thing about open enrollment is yes, you're busy. Yes, you have a lot of leads coming in. And yes, we're gonna have a lot of easy pickings right away. But if you want to maximize it, you have to keep consistency. That is the biggest thing. So we're gonna go through five pretty easy sales techniques here that are gonna help us get through the open enrollment. And for, or actually we're gonna go through day steps, excuse me. So first one, we're gonna go through day one. What should you do? So you're getting these leads, what should you do? Well, obviously call them right away. That's a big one, right? You're gonna call them right away, but you're going to leave a voicemail. And this week I've had a lot of questions on, or last week, what kind of voicemail should I leave? What kind of emails should I send? And that's what I'm going to show you today. So these are proven strategies that have worked for a lot of agents. Uh, some of my, my most successful agents do these lead strategies and they are extremely organized. They move their leads into different folders and move those folders around as we go. So first off, you're gonna call the lead right away. Why? Because first off, most people don't answer their phone right away without calling. So that's why you're going to leave a voicemail. I'll tell you, when they see a random number, they're gonna say, no go, not answering it, put it away. So you're going to leave a quick voicemail. It'll be a short 15 to 30 second voicemail of who you are, what you do, and your contact information. Now, leaving a voicemail is a very specific skill. And in sales, it's gonna be a skill that is gonna turn around and making you a lot of money. If you haven't gone through, there's a really good voicemail training, a YouTube clip that we have at HCP Sales in the training section. If not, we're gonna go through it next week. So tune in next Monday, we're gonna go through how to leave an effective voicemail. So you're gonna leave a quick voicemail, but you're gonna follow that voicemail up with an email. What is that email going to say? Hello, I gave you a call about your re request for information on affordable health and dental insurance. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by just saying health. A lot of agents do that. We make pretty good money on dental. It has some of the highest retention in the industry. Honestly, if you're sitting there and you are selling dental insurance over and over and over, you can make a pretty decent paycheck on those. You know, I have agents who are making, you know, 30 grand a year on just selling dental. I specialize in helping people who've had difficulty obtaining insurance due to either medical history or affordability. Feel free to call me or email me if you'd like help finding the best plan you need. By the way, there are no fees for my service. So something quick kind of to that point. Who you are, what you can do, and that it's free. A lot of people don't want to follow up with brokers because they assume brokers have a cost because in other industries, you pay for brokers. Where in our industry, you don't. This is easy. So this is going to be one of those things you're going to do right away. You're going to go through, do the phone call right away. If you answer them, sell them, sell them, sell them. If not, leave a voicemail of who you are. Make sure to give them your contact information, a quick hint about voicemails. Never tell anybody what to do. You tell them what to do. They're not going to do it. Never tell an adult what to do. Uh, after that, you're going to send an email so they have an idea of who you are. And then you're going to end it by doing another call in about 30 minutes to an hour. You're going to say, wait, I just called them. You want me to call them in 30 minutes? Yes, because to people, if they're getting a call twice in an hour, that means it's something that's important. A lot of people will answer the second time, especially if you leave a call, you do a call, leave a voicemail, they're gonna to listen to the voicemail, usually right away actually. And then if you're gonna call again, they will answer. So this is a pretty easy day one, that's gonna right away increase your people listening. If you can increase the funnel on the top of, hey, you know, funnel thinking of it's gonna be, you know, contacts, contacts are gonna to lead to appointments, which are going to lead to pitches, which will lead to sales. If you can expand the top of the funnel, the bottom of the funnel will expand as well. Pretty easy thing to do. That is day one, and don't worry, we'll go through a quick overview of all the days. Day two, what you're going to do again is you're going to do a call. Try not to do it during the exact same time as what you did with the first call. You usually do it about 20, 30 minutes earlier. Um, what I do is I actually section out my calendar for, hey, 
these are going to be the hours that I'm going to be just doing outbound dials. I suggest doing something like that instead of staggering it in between. Uh, people are best and they work the best if you are doing one thing at a time. So I'd say spend this 30 minutes to an hour just doing outbound dials. So do that again. Leave them a voicemail about not being able to reach them. Let them know it's the busiest time of year. This voicemail is going to be more between the 30 and 45 second range. Uh, that you are a licensed agent that is contracted with many carriers. That is the advantage of working here with HCP. Uh, you're here to educate and guide. There's no fee for your service. Contact information and then let them know at the end you'll be calling them again today. One thing we talked about before open enrollment is creating voicemail scripts. So these are going to be the bullet points of what you need to hit that voicemail again in about 45 seconds. Don't talk too fast. Set a natural pace. Be consistent with that. And then at the end of the day, what you're going to do again is you are going to give them a call. This is just going to give them a chance when they are off work to actually answer your phone call. You've left them two voicemails now, so you're actually at the front of their mind. Repetition with people is going to help get you to the front of their mind. There's a lot of strategy behind how to properly work a lead, so that's why these things seem kind of weird, but they work. Day three, so if you had no luck on day one and day two, that is fairly shocking, but day three, what we're going to do, this is an easy day. You're just going to call. Uh, you're actually going to call during a prime time. What's a prime time? It would be 10 o'clock um, central time. So usually what that is, it's 11 o'clock eastern, uh, you know, all the way to 8 o'clock western there. So what it, that is, is that is actually a really good prime time. It gives them a chance that they may be at work. They've already had their coffee. Things are slowed down a little bit. They could answer your call. So we don't want to keep the calls too consistent on times because we want to make sure we're going to hit them at the right time. You're not going to leave a voicemail. I know, kind of odd, you're not going to be leaving a voicemail, but that happens. Uh, what I recommend here is just sending them another email, and here's a kind of a template that you can do for the emails. If you need any help with email templates after this, do let me know. So hello, a while ago you inquired online about either health or dental insurance. Again, leaving myself open to sell dental. Are you still without affordable insurance? Day three, some people may have been pitched already. You know, we want to be the first to the punch, but... If they say, hey, I'm no longer interested, then we can follow up with dental and accident policies, but at least you're opening communication. I'm regularly gaining access to new options for health, life, and dental. I specialize in helping people choose which insurance is best for them while saving them money on their premiums. There's no fee for my service, and I have access to, and you can put a list of carriers that you have access to. Day three, pretty easy, pretty quick, not going to be super time-consuming for your leads. What you're going to do is you're actually going to give them a day off. I know, a day off, but you're going to follow up on day five. So what you've done now is you contact them day one, day two, day three, and then day five is where you're going to give them another shot. Day five is an easy day as two. It is just a phone call and a quick voicemail about not being able to reach them. You've tried to reach them a few times recently. Do they have insurance? So you're kind of repeating what that uh, email was said on day three. What are they looking for? Ask a question, leave it open. Some people respond best with questions. And again, you, your service is free and you have access to a lot of carriers. Again, you can be reached. Never ask them to call you. It is one of the first things I hear in voicemails is, you know, please give me a call. You're begging for my business. That must mean you're not good at what you do, that you don't have enough customers right now. So, hey, I can be reached. You know, this is my busiest time of year. You know, I have a lot of appointments going on. I can be reached. If I don't answer, leave me a voicemail. Bam. Pretty quick and to the point. That's day five call in a voicemail, then you're going to wait. Okay, you didn't get a hold of them on the first five days. Maybe there's something going on. Maybe they put the request in, they went on vacation. Maybe their kid got in trouble at school and they don't have time right now. Day eight, you're going to give them a call because by now, you know, the lead's getting a little old and you don't want to spend a ton of time on it. You just want to make sure that they're still in the hopper. Day eight, quick voicemail or a quick call, no voicemail, but shoot an email. Again, kind of the same thing. Uh, this is when you're going to be saying, hey, did you actually request information? Looks like there's some confusion regarding a recent inquiry for health insurance. Are you still without affordable insurance? My job's here to help clients free of charge choose the best health or dental insurance out there in the market. If you're still shopping, I can be reached. Okay, so day eight, the lead's getting a little old, but we're still sitting there. We're still trying. What we're going to do is we're actually going to put them into a folder saying call next week, literally a week. So what's going to happen is day 14. You're going to give them a phone call you're going to leave them a voicemail that you haven't reached them. You don't want to scold them too much. Like, hey, you know, I haven't been able to get a hold of you. If you scold people in voicemails, they're not going to answer. It 
takes your probability from about 50% callback to like 2% callback. Never guilt somebody, uh, never scold them. That makes them feel bad. People don't respond to feeling bad. Uh, you've tried to reach them a few times. Do they have insurance? Let them know either way. You can be reached at. This is a quick 15 seconds. If you can get your voicemails down between 8 and 15 seconds, there's a chance that the client's going to listen to the whole thing before deleting them just by how long it takes them to delete. So day 14, you're doing this. Then you're going to call them again on day 15. Let me get this one up and going. Oh, jumped one too far. So move back here. Actually, day 15 is just an email about open enrollment ending soon. Are they still without insurance and what your job is here? You, this way, you're still contacting them. Again, people have given up. Usually by the fourth contact, now you are on a solid at least seven or eight contacts at this point. And then day 20, this is one of my favorites. Keep this voicemail not negative, but I this is one of the voicemails that I've had the most luck on people contact me back with. It's just saying, hey, you know, I haven't been able to reach you. I have given you a call a few times. You know, I'm not here trying to, you know, harass you or anything, but I'm going to be closing out your file for health and dental insurance here. If you say I'm closing your file, so some people says, oh, you know what? I've been dragging my feet the whole time. I've been waiting, but this is the last time they're actually trying. I just say, you know, I'm going to be closing your file, and they give me a call back panicking, as funny as that is. Like, hey, you know, I haven't, I haven't given you a call, and they're going to give you 47 excuses that you don't really care about. You just want to make sure that they have what they need. So the last voicemail, not really a threat, but it's just saying, hey, you know, this is my last attempt of really trying to contact you. I'm going to close out your file. Here you go. Uh, keep in mind, never throw away your leads. I always keep them in a nice pool for when you have downtime to work after open enrollment, but there you go. So to take a look at this strategy overall, this is kind of what it looks like. So day 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 14, 15, and 20. Uh, you'll see that there are a lot of phone calls, there are emails, and there are voicemails. These are all different ways of touching base. Okay, So these are things that you want to do as much as possible. That way you're keeping your leads fresh, you're keeping them alive, and you are staying in the front of their mind. This is a proven lead strategy. It works great. Those voicemails work great. Voicemails are extremely powerful. They are a way better way of contacting people. Uh, you know, Obviously, talking to them on the phone is the first one. Second, if you can get them to listen to a voicemail, the probability of them calling you is going to be higher than an email. And that's why you're going to see that there are a ton of voicemails on there, and there's more voicemails than emails, it's because you will have better return on voicemails. So. That is kind of the lead strategy. That is what we go through. If you do have any questions on the strategy or how the strategy works, feel free to email out there at training at hcpsales.com. And I thought we would end today with a nice vote, a nice quote, a vision without a strategy remains an illusion. So you have this vision of being extremely successful. You need a strategy. I showed you the strategy. If you need help with the strategy, reach out. Do let me know. I'm here to help as much as possible, obviously. But if you have any questions, comments, and concerns, feel free to email training at hcpsales.com. That does go directly to me. If not, I hope everybody has a great Monday, and you know what? Let's knock another week out of the park. Have a good one, everyone.